everybody. We are lucky today because Christine Bullock is back with us. And I love these kind of moments where girlfriends can get together and just have some real talk. I'm so excited to be back and in person. And I love it. It's post been... baby and everything. I mean, it's crazy. Did you hear that? Post baby. <laughs> post baby. So the BB Body community loves you. And, and I love them. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I do think that the workouts that we've, been, that, that we've done together to date have been some of the most challenging workouts that I've done and shared with the community. And I think I joke around about this a lot that you inspired me to get stronger, to create more core strength and balance. So um, then a whole lot of things happened. My ACL surgery and Christine <laughs> had a baby. <laughs> yeah. Talk us through that real quick, just to get everybody yeah. up to speed. What I a miracle. Mean, since even, I mean, we've seen each other a little bit, but you know, through here in the workouts, it was like pre COVID. And I, on our last discussion, I talked about my fertility mm -hmm. issues. And my first daughter is adopted, adopted at birth. And I went through at that point, like five years of fertility issues. Yep. And then it was three years later and I got knocked up by accident. <laughs> And I have something that it prevents, it's harder for me to get pregnant. It's PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. Then I had had three miscarriages after Remy was born. Mm -hmm. And so I have a condition, it's like a blood um, clotting condition that co women commonly have and they fix that. So I was able to, I say it was an easy, but I was like injecting myself the entire pregnancy and you know, but you know but what, I was it. so happy, yeah. And I have the sweetest, calmest yeah. happiest baby ever she's adorable thank you you're so lucky yeah. what a blessing yeah. i mean i think that's where faith comes into play absolutely i i always kind of just led it to the universe but also knew that if that was something i wanted so badly in my heart that that was something that god actually wanted to give me mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and so i just knew that it was going to happen somehow yeah well Ah, such a celebration. And I'm so glad, you know, working with bodies, that was the most important. I never cared about a biological baby, but I wanted to experience pregnancy. And yeah. I'm a pre and postnatal specialist, so I've helped so many women through pregnancy. And it was like, to be able to util to experience the tools mm -hmm. that I use for delivery, and they worked, so it was good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious how talking about body work the strength of the core and what you're able to do with your body, did that really affect the pregnancy, the delivery, your ability to bounce back? Because I do, I'm just gonna say it, I think you look better now than you've ever looked. Thank you. I feel good, I feel the best that I've ever felt, you know? I felt like, and yes, absolutely, it was the connection with your body that I love so much. I loved being pregnant, mm -hmm. and I know not everybody does, but I feel like that was part of it. I love the experience of growing. I love the changes in my body, mm -hmm. the different foods that I, you know, had to kind of eat, mm -hmm. and just listening into my body. Like most of the time, I was a plant-based vegan beforehand. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I really didn't eat a lot of chicken or meat. And there was one part of the pregnancy in the first after the like first I trimester. Need some protein. <laughs> and then I just lived off of protein. Basically, it was like you know, you just. I loved tuning in, and then during the delivery. Instead of sitting there, I was doing all the movements to mm -hmm. work the baby down and the squats and up, and it worked. She was like crowning almost yeah. immediately. So. It's amazing the understanding that you have, how you're dialed in and tapped into your own body, how that body awareness um, just affects so many different things in our lives. I, I want to ask you because fear seems to be a big topic as of late, um, you know, not just pandemic and, you know, as we're coming out of it now and getting back to normal, but, you know, fear really gets in our way in so many areas of life, love, work, fitness. Um, did you have, I know you as a woman, so I know that you breed confidence and strength, but did you have fear about the changes in the body and what was going to happen on the other side of it to yourself as a woman? I'm sure I did. I think we all have little fears or thoughts about it. Um, but, and you know, even what a lot of women don't talk about, and I think it's more recently a bit talked about on social media is the fourth trimester, mm -hmm. directly after you have baby and you're like, still pregnant looking, yeah. you know? And you're just like, what's happening? And then people think you're still pregnant and you're, you're really pain, not. <laughs> or, you know, your, your boobies are being utilized. So there's so much to that. 
um, mm -hmm. that I got to learn. But like from any other expert too, like I hired um, just experts in the field to help me repair afterwards mm -hmm. from breastfeeding experts to all that kind of stuff. So I felt like I, I wasn't scared or fearful. Mm -hmm. I, I just know to direct myself to what is going to work immediately. Mm -hmm. And it was the same way in like Pregnancy. So you empowered yourself with yeah. knowledge and surrounded yeah. yourself with experts of field. To worried help about guide gaining you the weight because I'm like I'll, I'll lose the weight or I'll feel beautiful the way I am even if I don't. You mm -hmm. know. So well, that's the power. There are other things I'm fearful about, but <laughs> but that's the power in what you're saying. So, kind of leads me to the concept of surrender. And Christine and I were talking about this a little bit before. There's something so vulnerable and so empowering about being able to settle into what is and and really just surrender and i i felt the same way i mean i was a much younger mom times four and in the business um in the fitness business in the modeling business and not knowing what would happen but i wanted to be a mother so much that i was okay letting mother nature take her course and just give me what was she was going to give me because i wanted to be a mother more than i was sort of drowning in my own vanity. So that being said, though, I actually I, always I, wondered I, about that. Yeah. yeah. You know, because yeah. I know, I feel like the moms, especially in entertainment too, you yeah. have to take, it's seemingly like you have to take some time off and then. I didn't get the privilege of doing that. I yeah. powered through all my pregnancies and then got right back to work, you know, like Amazing. you did yeah. um, without compromising my, the commitment to my family. But it's also that message that I carry on to a lot of women that we can do anything as mothers. We can do anything and everything that we want to do if we get our head in the right place and if we believe. So for me, it's really about um, desire and it's about faith, which goes back to the faith that you had in your body. And, you know, there's always going to be things in our way. Some people miss their moment because they were so focused on other things and climbing the mountain of success that they never had a baby. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I want to talk about surrender a little bit because I know we're both approaching a new decade of our life is happening, whether we <laughs> like it or not. Um, you first. So I'll be 40 this year. I can't believe it. And you've never looked better. I'm going to be. Thank you. Oh, OK. Well, you've never looked better. Well, OK, so that happened a long time ago for me. I'm going to be 50 this and year. And you never look better. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and it, uh, something that's coming up a lot in interviews is the question of how do I feel about it? How am I dealing with it? Am I stressed? Am I worried? Blah, 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 all this shallow stuff. And I'm like, it's happening anyway. <laughs> like, it's happening. It's knocking on the door. Mother Nature <laughs> fucked us over. Like, it's happening. So I, I really just believe in, like, the surrender of acceptance. Mm -hmm. And I think what many people are getting wrong, and I can't say when I turned 40 that I knew that and what I know today. Mm -hmm. But I think one of the things that people are getting wrong is they're so hyper-focused in our society, in our country, about looking good and turning back the hands of time. Instead of being focused on longevity, optimal living, energy, and feeling good. Yeah. So if I can shift out of the headspace of fighting the fight of beauty, it's van vanity, it's changing. And I can tap into what am I going to do to feel good during this decade of my life and next decade. I, I think that's the most valuable takeaway for women. Your health, your internal health, we were talking about our gut health, like all the little intricate things mm -hmm. too, your spiritual health, mm -hmm. your emotional health. I uh, Absolutely, I think I've never felt so, you know, in my area right now mm -hmm. that I don't mind. Yes, there's something to me being in that four zero yeah. decade, you know? <laughs> that seems so long ago. <laughs> no, but it's a big deal. But I don't, I still feel in my 20s, even though I have a baby waking mm -hmm. me up, you know, throughout the night, and I have a four, a four year, a crazy four year old running around constantly. It's like, I still have never felt so young mm -hmm. because I'm still dedicating those moments to myself mm -hmm. to take care of me. Yeah. You know, it's so important. I, I, I think you agree with me in that we have a better understanding of who we are. 
we have a better understanding of how to care for our body, how to train our body, how to be more efficient with our time, yes, how to work out, you know, some of the things that, you know, you'll experience with the many different burns that we've done together. It's, it's understanding our body, how to target tone, how to hit the trouble areas, how to sculpt. It's different than getting on a treadmill, doing old school squats, which don't underestimate them. We like old school squats, but it's the tweaks. It's, that's the biggest thing I hear all the time, and especially post-pregnancy and stuff. I have way, even way less time. And people are like, well, you must be working out all mm -hmm. the time. It's absolutely not. Your health is about taking those small moments mm -hmm. so that you have all the big moments That's for right. everything else you want to do in life. It's not exactly kind of like what you're going yeah. back to. Just focus, 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 focus because you miss out on life. Mm -hmm. And so it is just about really effective workouts, eating the right foods. Being more efficient with yeah. our time, doing Put compound moves, feeling good, right? Yeah. The good energy, all of that really matters. So I want to give um, our community some takeaways in the vein of, let's give them some things that they can do to surrender, to keep the faith in their own body, mm -hmm. to really bask in mindful fitness, which is a term of recent, you know, that we're hearing a lot about. Mindful fitness is about mind, body, spirit. It's not about the booty. We can show them how to get hot girl summer bikini body all day long. It's actually the easy stuff, summer. you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'm kind of like, oh, I'm not really into like the hot girl summer. I'm into yeah. like the feel good summer. Yeah. Yes. And I keep telling women and I keep telling them it's about how we feel, but it's also faith in our body and that yes, we can. And yes, we can get there and it's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Like, it's all going to be okay. It's happening. You know what? why it's going to be okay? Because you're present and you're enjoying yeah. everything that you have your hands into, whether it is your family, you take time for your friends mm -hmm. all the time, your loved ones, mm -hmm. your work, enjoying mm -hmm. that. And I think, yeah. like, one main takeaway, taking from that is knowing what makes you happy. Mm -hmm. Like, let's take the fitness out for one second and come back to mm -hmm. that. And the health, it's like, what is who is truly making you happy mm -hmm. and what is truly making you happy mm -hmm. and spending the time on that yep. and getting rid of the rest. So to simplify it, just defining your happiness. Yeah. So if we can begin there, and I think as a younger woman, you don't really know what makes you happy or maybe this does, maybe this doesn't. All the jobs. I want you to make me happy because I don't know how to get happy. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So defining what happiness looks like for you as a woman, mm -hmm. what does that mean? So awesome right mm -hmm. and you know I love what you said too about you know how you're spending it who you're spending it with so creating boundaries mm -hmm. and as a younger woman it's hard to do that you know I create boundaries and carve out me time and I know you do as well juggling work life love and kids I do it because I know I'm worthy of it and I'm leading by example with my children showing them that mommy matters too I value myself and I'm creating this boundary so I can be a better me for you, for everybody else. But I'm I'm worthy of that. I have no shame in that game yeah. <laughs> at all. Yeah. And I think I actually feel like through COVID, it's taught me a lot more because we still, even though I thought I did it beforehand, mm -hmm. we had a lot of meetings or I would go out to dinners with my husband for his job and mm -hmm. stuff like that, you know. And I miss some time with my kids, you yeah. know, with Remy during that. And I don't want to miss those moments mm -hmm. anymore. And so I am much more, even more now of a no person. And I was a no person before. Well, you're, re you're reading my mind. Like we, we can talk for hours because we have such similar philosophies. But when you say that about it, you were a no person before. Like I, really I love that. People I love. So a lot of people are yes people. Mm -hmm. And I really believe that less is more so that you have more room for the yeses. So I say yeah. no all the time. And I do not feel guilty about it. Mm -hmm. And I do it nicely. But it's, mm -hmm. about, it's about, you know, the one thing that the pandemic taught our society so many people in our society is how to spend your time mm -hmm. and how you know the obligations that we have and things that are pulling us in a million different directions that just take away from our life force they take away from you know the essence our energy force what all that life. stuff mm -hmm. um, so they usurp they use yeah. energy yeah you know so learning to say no yeah. Um, is a skill. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and it's imperative to survival so that you can say yes to the things that are important to you. I always say this when I hear women like dating too, but I always say one door cannot close until you fully and officially close the other door. Like yeah. you really have to cut the, the, 
spiritual ties and mm-hmm. it goes with anything you mean one door cannot life. open open yeah oh, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. no one no i'm with you because i know what you mean no but that's so true but it is with everything in your life too. yeah so if you even have a little bit of energy here you know and it's not working for you you just you have to move on yeah from it i i want to connect that to the concept okay. of thoughts so letting go of people, cutting the cord, letting go of obligations, letting go of things that don't make us feel good. Yes, got to do that. That's way easier than letting go of all the shit that's in our way, in our head, mm-hmm. as women. Mm-hmm. Whether we're aging gracefully or not, or you have fear, or you're 50 or 40 or 60 or 20. Letting go of the negative chatter, the little voice inside your head, all of the stuff that's standing in your way is so important and i i want to say that it's just a choice it's I just say, I a practice know how to either yeah and we have to yeah. shut off that little voice inside mm-hmm. our head it goes back to what we said in the beginning about faith in our body faith in our abilities um it's focusing on the positive and no fear Focusing on the positive, if, letting go of fear. If you have fear, someone's going to see a wrinkle. If you have fear, someone's going to see cellulite. If we're going back to mm-hmm. those kind of things we are talking mm-hmm. about aging. If you have a fear to take the next step in your life or move away from somebody, right? It, mm-hmm. it, it basically freezes the mm-hmm. life. And yeah. then if you're just like, why not? Let me just try this. Yeah. Then yeah. You know, the, the, the focus on the, the negative, the... the I don't like the word negative, but let's just say the less positive. <laughs> less positive parts about our body. Okay, yeah. so they're there. The cellulite. The, it's okay. Uh, yeah. It is yeah. what it is. Yeah. But just parts. Of I can body. promise you that people are going to notice the sparkle in your eye and notice the smile on yeah. your face. And if you can learn to look into the mirror, you don't like the little laugh lines or not? Just smile a little bit more. <laughs> like they just go the away. <laughs> But if you can start focusing and changing that inner dialogue and the way that we see ourselves, it's an exercise for the mind. It's an exercise for the soul. It's not an exercise for the body. It's a practice, a daily practice. And if we can let go of all that negative energy, that toxic energy, all of those thoughts, I really think that shifts us into a powerful, positive space.